It has been almost a year since the horrific July 17th murder of Eric Gardner by NYPD was caught on camera. The death of Freddie Gray, along with the unrest of Baltimore, has brought more of the same pain to communities of color. I just think that there's such a high level of institutionalized racism in this world, but also definitely in this country and in this city. And so, you know, it's gonna take, it's a challenge, it's an uphill battle because we have innocent people. I mean, it's, these are the cases that just make it to the news. There's cases like this happening every day. My Facebook feed alone has five to six incidences on tape every day of people being discriminated against based on color. And it's not right, and I would love to see it change, but I don't necessarily have faith that unless we're, we activate and we motivate in the way like we're doing tonight, in a peaceful way and in an intelligent way, that things are going to change. There needs to be some there need to be reform in police behaviors and there need to be accountability in those reforms because it, it doesn't really make sense, you know, to just be like, okay, whatever, uh, you guys, this is what we'll say you have to do, but then you just don't do it and you have the same thing and then you'll start that eruption process all over where, you know, it'll be, and it'll be dormant and it'll build up and then another 40 years we'll be right here again and I'll be having a beard hopefully by then and I'll be telling you, well, see, I told you this would happen. So, you know what I'm saying? We got to address those root concerns. Incidents regarding police brutality have occurred too frequently over the past year. Many have been documented on camera, while others have not. But one thing is certain, accountability must be taken by the police officers, and communities of color must continue to fight for reform in police interactions. I'm sick and tired of this because my mother's 73 years old and she was 14 when Emmett Till died. She was the same age as he was and she and my father and so many of my family members have just gone through this and seen hatred their entire life and it hasn't changed. And we certainly can't have it in our, in our government, in our law enforcement, and it needs to stop. It's a wallet, a wallet. You know, don't you keep money in, your badges, this is a wallet. Think of mass incarceration, yeah. certain area codes where you have tremendous amounts of people that have been um, in the criminal justice system that undermines people's ability to get gainful employment. Um, you know, just also if you think about um, law enforcement, the way law enforcement interacts um, with, with people in communities um, in, in Baltimore um, and around the state of Maryland, we've been trying to amend the Maryland Law Enforcement Office of Bill of Rights. And it's actually very important that your audience knows about this. This is a, uh, something that was codified in 1974. It provides law enforcement here in the state of Maryland laws above and beyond their constitutional rights. Um, among those, law enforcement, only other sworn law enforcement officers can investigate allegations of police misconduct or excessive force. Or so the police trial boards to determine disciplinary action on law enforcement officials is made up of other law enforcement officials. Um, there's the infamous 10-day rule where a law enforcement officer who is alleged to have engaged in excessive force um, gets 10 days before they're forced to make a statement on the record. So this gives law enforcement officers time to come up with the story. So all kinds of things that um, protection that law enforcement gets and undermines the ability for the community to be involved in substantively administering how policing happens in the communities and it undermines our ability to get the kind of information we need to hold police accountable.